Open spot four from Shark RF. Perhaps the best ham radio digital mode hotspot incorporating DMR D Star P25 Yezu System Fusion Pox Sag cross modes between them all. Built in battery. We're going to talk about it right now. Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, Need Software, to 818-217-0380. That's 818-217-0380. Ham Radio 2.0 reviews news and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio. This is brand new. I have done a video about the open spot since day one, since it first came out. The name of the device is open spot. The name of the company is Shark RF. Their website is sharkrf.com. Uh, you can see their website actually right here. And this one is an open spot four. Now, this one's not labeled open spot four. It's the same exact size as the open spot three right here okay and there's two mo two models of it there's the open spot 4 and the open spot 4 pro the pro extends the feature set of the 4 with onboard transcoding hardware the 4 has the best voice quality in cross mode operation supports d star cross modes use your d star transceiver to access dmr c4 fm which they mean system fusion when they say that nxdn or your DMR C4FM NXDM transceiver to access D-Star networks. Supports call audio playback. Supports 10 configuration profiles. The OpenSpot 4 Pro extends the feature set of the OpenSpot 4 with onboard transcoding hardware. So that almost sounds like the OpenSpot 4 doesn't do transcoding at all. But I think what that means is that the OpenSpot 4 does it via software. And the 4 Pro does it via hardware. Okay, because someone came along in the comments of my video and said on the open spot four on on the, the announcement video and said I have the regular four, not the pro, and it does do D star transcoding. At the time of this recording, the open spot is the only one that will do D star transcoding. And the open spot three, the previous model to this one, was the first one to ever do D star. It's easy to transcode Yezu to, to DMR and DMR to Yezu System Fusion. But the open spot was the first and only one that would ever do D star transcoding because D star is an older mode. It's a little bit different in a, a couple different ways. Pi star still doesn't transcode D star, uh, but the open spot does. I got this in the mail last week. I just haven't had a chance to record a video on it quite yet. The only thing that comes in the box is this cable and the unit itself. It'd be a boring unboxing video. All right, so we can go right here and I can plug this in. And I don't know if you can see it in there or not, but that just lit up. This just lit up red. Probably kind of hard to see in there, but that's where it's at. This is your Wi-Fi button, which the last one had. This is your power on button because it's got its own internal battery. Now, they say the battery will last for, um, I don't know, what does it say here? I think the last one, I think the open spot, open spot 3 was advertised to last for 10 hours on the battery. There it is right there. 30 hours of operation is what they're advertising on this battery. I kind of doubt that. The, the last one was advertised at 10 hours, if I remember correctly, and I never got that out of it. No, it would last for like two or three hours or four hours. So if you wanted to take it from the car into the house, you want to walk around a ham fest with it, it would work for that. But it's not lasting 10 hours. 30 hour, Up to 30 hours of operation? <laughs> kind of doubt it. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. So let's power this on. And it beeped just then. And now this is flashing right here. I don't know if you can see that. In the, yeah, there you go. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to power up. It's going to look for a Wi-Fi network. And since I've never programmed my Wi-Fi parameters into this unit, it's not going to find anything. So it should automatically go to what's called AP mode, access point mode. So I should be able to pull up a computer, a tablet, my phone, whatever, find the open spot access point, connect to it, and do a scan of the Wi-Fi, my ambient Wi-Fi here, and then connect that access point to the Wi-Fi, reboot the open spot, 
and it should connect to my ambient Wi-Fi. So that's what we're going to try to do right now. The original open spot had an Ethernet port with no Wi-Fi. Everyone since then, the 2, 3, and 4 have Wi-Fi only with no Ethernet port. So depending on which way you do or don't like that, that's just what they are. So right there, we see open spot 4 AP. So that's what I'm going to connect to right there. And then I'm going to pull up a browser and type in open spot four dot local it still doesn't like that okay so we go over here to the user manual which is online it doesn't come with the manual it's just all online which is good it's fine so this it shows us right here this flashing white led light means that it's in ap mode after this the led will be slowly flashing while indicating that the device has entered access point ap mode and broadcasting its own wi-fi uh, Wi-Fi SSID called OpenSpot 4. That's where we're at right now. So that's what it did. I never saw it flash quickly, but it just kind of started up and flashed slowly, which is fine. Okay. If the initialization setup won't automatically open, then you can connect, you can open it by entering uh, the IP address into the browser 192.168.99.1. So that's what we're going to do right now. The initialization setup opens automatically. No, it doesn't either. All right. So what I did was... I went down here to my phone and when you connect to a AP hotspot Android, it says sign in to the network and I clicked sign into the network and it brought me up to the open spot page. Okay. Now you can, you can also enter into the browser 192.168.99.1 if this page doesn't come up. But if you just click on sign into network, that's what worked for me. So we're going to go here, United States next, and it's going to scan. And these are all my close by networks here. My network is named QRZ. I've said that before in the past. Connect network key. I'm not going to let you look at that. Connecting, acquiring IP address, connected, next. Access point AP mode will be turned off. Okay, connected my phone back to the regular QRZ network. Now we've got a different flashing here. It's flashing green and red. Hopefully you can see most of that in there. Yeah, you should be able to see. It's kind of faint, but it's there. And we're going to go over here to the website, and I'm going to try to just type in openspot4.local and see if that works from a from a web page. My router is very bad about DNS uh, domain name service translation. I don't know if there's a setting in there I'm missing. I don't think there is because I've looked before, but for whatever reason, I almost always have to type in IP addresses. OpenSpot4 is uh, 1.46. Yep, there we go. OpenSpot4. Note down here at the bottom right, it says, note, you can enable advanced mode here, show settings on the web interface. I'm gonna go ahead and enable that. Boom. All right. This is the open spot for menu. Call sign. What is my call sign? Right. KC5 H2. DMR ID. Uh, let's do 3148141. That's my other ID. NXDN. Sure, why not? Dark mode. Ooh, I like that. Dark mode. Save. Quick setup. DMR. Frequency. Let's do... um. We're not 450. Bump color code is one. That's fine. Brandmeister. Yeah. Okay, Brandmeister. United States 3103. Call sign password. Yeah, that's my. So on Brandmeister dashboard, you have to set a unique password now. 31770. See, there we go. Connect. Please check the server. <laughs> I don't remember what my server password is. Nope. But I pro I can probably figure it out. Quick setup. There it is. <laughs> okay. Status. There we go. Our finder users group. And that's as quick as that. This Oh, Brandmeister Manager. This is new. API key, actions, static talk groups. I can add a static talk group, dynamic talk group. I can drop all or do a quick call. And reflector. That's kind of neat. Okay. There's a Poxag DAPnet menu over here. Poxag is a paging service. I've never used it. I think Josh did a one of his live streams about Poxag, if I remember correctly. It's a while ago. But I've never used it. Don't really know. DMR SMS chat. 
message destination ID, source ID, so I can send chats, send SMS messages over DMR, which has been possible since day one. That's cool. ID database lookup. Auto match ID and call fields. Don't look up group calls. No, I don't want that. DMR P25 CCS7, DMR talk group. ID or calls so I can look that up. And then upgrade. If I click on upgrade, no upgrade found. So we're good with that. I just got this. Yep, just got this in the mail. Still on the same version that it was when I received it. Charging says 88. My battery is at 88 or 89 percent now, right there. Okay. USB current limit is 1500 milliamps. The old one had a battery status at the um, at the top here that showed you the, the status of the battery. I don't see that over here at the top at the top left rather. So quick setup went back to this menu. You can go quick setup these things here. And light menu. User manual is just a quick a clickable link from in there. Okay. Shark RF link. You can set up your own network on Shark RF link. I can set up my open spot as a server and I can tell you guys to connect to it and say, hey, connect to this IP with this password. And then we form our own private network. It has to be used with a Shark RF open spot, but I think any of them will work. Any of the versions will work. But uh, but you we could set up our own Shark RF network and communicate, and it's outside of DMR, YSF, DSTAR, and everything. So kind of I think we all have to be using the same type of radio, but I'm not sure on that. APRS. Uh, enable in background. Rotate APRS two dot net. Allow uploading device location. Turn that off. I don't actually usually run APRS on DMR. All right, up at the top. So those are the, the, the quick call. Yeah, you can quick call. Group call, 4,000. Private call, 4,000. That 4,000 disconnects everything. So brand Meister manager. All this stuff is on the, the right-hand side. The user manual and the Shark RF link are on the left-hand side. Up at the top here, we have connectors. This is a pretty common page from the last version. We can have modem. So what you can do here, and there's a way to do this uh, that I've done before in previous videos, but what you can do here is you can change the modem to D-Star or C4FM or whatever, and then you can go to connectors and have it connect like a D-Star radio to the Brandmeister network. So that's how you do cross-connect. I'm not going to do that today. There's been other videos with this done. I've done it before. Maybe we'll do that in another video later. If you'd like to see that performed... Put a comment below. So settings right here. So here's your active profile. So the pro model, it said it had 10 active profiles. So I can active slot profile number one. I'm just going to put, uh, hold on. No, I can change there. Okay, let's uh, profile number one. This is, name it. Brandmeister there, save. And now I'm on active slot, profile slot one, Brandmeister. And that's where we're at. So if I, cha if I set up... Slot 2 for YSF to connect to something, fine. And then I'll set up slot 3 to connect to my Seabridge, fine. I can go back to Brandmeister, go back to YSF, however I want to do that. And I can name the profiles, whatever I want to. The previous version, op the open spot 3, only had 5 profiles. This one has 10. So I think, if I read it correctly, then the open spot 4 non-pro model also only has 5. It says that the pro model had up to 10. So I don't know. It didn't really say how many the four had. I don't know, but not 10 probably. <laughs> Firmware upgrade, automatic upgrade last version. Okay. Voice announcements enabled. Location settings, D-Star settings. Okay. C4FM settings. Allow data calls to network. NXDN, P25. I really want to do some P25. You don't see P25 used a whole lot in, in amateur radio, but... It, uh, it sounds good. I've got a P25 radio, and I can do cross mode between DMR and P25 if I want to. So that's kind of cool. Beeper, find my device. You guys hear that? Click on find my device. It's not really loud, but, I mean, you know, if, like if you shut everything else off in the room, call audio. Do not play audio from modem. Okay. 
there we go that's in settings and then network status you can look up your network here that's the Wi-Fi I'm connected to with all the stats behind it that's my IP address IPv6 and IPv4 mode reset count is traffic network settings change my host name if I want to from open spot 4 NTP settings use DHCP server as possible I can scan for other Wi-Fi networks and I can set one of those why like I say I take it to Galveston or say I set it up in the truck with my mobile network I can save that into a profile and say Brandmeister at home Brandmeister in the car Brandmeister uh, in Galveston or I call it whatever I want to and then you can set up different SSIDs here for all saved all that too you save these five SSIDs here and it just scans it and says oh I know that one it connects automatically not a lot of changes from the open spot 3 it's um better battery life more profiles I know a lot of guys used to use profiles and really like it because they would use it uh, on different networks and they'd use it in um uh, different modes you know you do if you have a dmr radio and you want to do dmr to dmr you set up a profile you want to dmr to d star set up a profile dmr to ysf set up a profile dmr to yss ysf with a different location a different uh a diff different aprs or different um ssid for wi-fi another profile so it's got 10 profiles where the open spot 3 only had five profiles so that's an upgrade it's got a bigger battery so that's an upgrade and supposedly D star to DMR sounds better because it's now hardware transcoded. Going to do some testing with that. Going to do some testing with that and see how well that works. Probably plug this IC705 in, use it as my D star radio, and talk into the DMR network because I'm a rebel and I can.